Well, welcome again to another episode of Christian Answers. My name is uh, Pastor Jeff Short, and I'm going to be tackling another subject today that um, appeared in the news. This time it's in the Washington Post, and it's centered on the popular evangelical Christian speaker and conference speaker, Jen Hatmaker. Now, I have never heard of Jen Hatmaker, but plenty and many, many, many evangelical, especially women, have heard of her. The article says, author, speaker, and star of HDTV's My Big Family Home Renovation, Jen Hatmaker, speaks. Um, fans of Jen Hatmaker like her because she is, in one word, relatable. The Texas author and speaker writes about how about her messy family life, confessing in a viral 2013 post of being the worst end of school year mom ever. Her homespun approach has garnered her spots on the New York Times bestseller list and an HDTV series alongside husband Brandon and five children. So it looks like she's a television reality uh, star also, as well as a Christian author and conference speaker. Now, this isn't what got her into trouble as far as Christianity is concerned. It says, but last week, Hatmaker broke from her evangelical base telling religious news service columnist Jonathan Merritt that she supports same-sex marriage and believes LGBT relationships can be holy. Such statements followed a social media post this April in which Hatmaker called for LGBT inclusion in the churches. Her recent comments prompted Lifeway Christian Stores, the largest Southern Baptist bookseller that published her 2012 bestseller, uh, to discontinue selling her Bible studies and books. So here is a popular, very popular uh, women's Christian conference speaker and bestselling author has an influential following, she has now decided on her own, evidently on her own, based on her own opinion, that she now feels that same-sex marriage is fully acceptable. And actually, she goes further than most evangelical, so-called, who have caved in on this moral issue. But she goes further and she says that such relationships can be, quote, holy. And so she makes a theological statement and says that they can be holy. And we have to respond to this because this is just yet another indication of evangelicals, so-called Bible-believing Christians. That's what evangelicals are. They're the Bible-believing branch of Protestantism. These people who call themselves evangelical and yet depart from the Bible's teaching, plain teaching on a variety of issues. And here's the latest. This woman, for whatever reasons, we don't know, other than she just decided that she wants to believe that LGBT inclusion is totally acceptable by God and that gay marriage is okay and she gave an interview and was willing to state that publicly and she's willing to then say that's compatible with my faith and so on and so forth. The backlash, the article says, to both Hatmaker's comments and to Lifeway's decision reveals growing rancor in evangelical circles over same-sex relationships. White evangelical Protestants remain the U.S. religious group least likely to support same-sex marriage. That's a good thing. That's a positive thing. The article is exactly right. Evangelical Protestants remain the U.S. religious group least likely to support same-sex marriage. And that's because evangelicals traditionally have accepted the Reformation motto, sola scriptura, which means the authority in the Christian faith comes from, from solely from, the scriptural teachings in the Bible. It doesn't come from a committee somewhere. It doesn't come from the Pope. It doesn't come from one strong Christian leader. It doesn't come from a council. It doesn't come from tradition 
or the so-called magisterium of the church. He comes from the Bible alone. That's what Christians have affirmed, and that's what Protestantism has traditionally affirmed, and that's what evangelicals affirm. And that's why that the least likely to support same-sex marriage comes from evangelicals. But here is a so-called evangelical who is saying, well, no, I want to be evangelical, but I also want to affirm the LGBT agenda, and I want to affirm gay marriage. And she's wanting to take people along with her in that direction. And as a Christian leader, as a pastor, as someone who has theological training, I want to say this is apostasy, this is heresy, and we need to call it out. We need to expose this. This woman, for whatever she did in the past, is now a false teacher. We need to label her as a false teacher. We need to not buy her books. We need to boycott her conferences. We need to not schedule her for any more biblical, evangelical, Christian speaking engagements. And we need to basically treat her as what she is now, a false prophetess. And we need to say that to as many people as we can because we don't want people being deceived by her false teachings. The article says, Absent a pope or unifying denomination, evangelicals turn to the Bible as the authority on all matters, and most believe scripture forbids same-sex relationships, as it clearly does. It clearly does. If you go from Genesis to Revelation, you make a thorough study on the subject, it is so clear you don't even have to guess as to what it's saying. It condemns homosexual relationships and therefore, consequently, condemns so-called same-sex marriage, which is basically an attempt to make holy what is unholy. And so evangelicals must say, no, that doesn't work. We can't go there. It says, the article says, but in recent years, evangelical groups have divided over how to practice that teaching in church ministry and outreach. In 2013, humanitarian group World Vision incited swift backlash and quickly reversed course after announcing it would hire staff in same-sex marriages. And if you remember back about three years ago when that happened, World Vision tried to pull a fast one and say, well, we want to be inclusive and we want to be open to all different diverse viewpoints. And we criticized that. I criticized that. Others criticized that at the time. They reversed course, thankfully, and now we have someone else emerging to try to test the boundaries of orthodoxy, biblical orthodoxy, and the latest is this spokesman, this woman, speaker, Jan, Jen Hatmaker. The article goes on, but in recent years, evangelical groups have divided over how to practice that teaching. Individual Leaders who break from the traditional teaching on same-sex relationships, among them ethicist David Gushy. Get that, get the irony there. Ethicist David Gushy. So an ethicist, and we've talked about this before, but ethicists, they're supposed to be those who specialize in ethical thinking. And here we have a so-called, quote, ethicist David Gushy, who is now favoring same-sex marriage, totally ignoring the biblical teachings, totally ignoring what God has said, and now coming up with his own humanistic arguments to try to justify sin. Pastor Tony Campolo, we've talked about him before, how he has turned from Christian teacher now into an apostate, a false teacher in his own right. And then former Christianity Today editor David Neff, I've talked about him before, who was, had this tremendous responsibility of editing the most popular evangelical Christian uh, publication, uh, Christianity Today. And he has now, since his retirement, thankfully he's retired, he doesn't get his paws on the pages of Christianity Today, and he can't influence another generation, but he has now collapsed on this and has given way and surrendered to the LGBTQ, RSTV, WXYZ agenda. And he's now teaching false teaching. So the article says, these individuals 
raise questions over whether one can affirm LGBT relationships and remain an evangelical. They're pushing the boundaries. They're trying to see how far they can go. Today, Hatmaker published a follow-up post on her Facebook page, stating that she came to the conclusion with prayer and careful study and deliberation. Oh my goodness, with prayer? You are praying about something that God has made already very clear in the Bible? You are clear, praying about whether you will violate scripture, whether you will contradict God's word? Is that what you're praying about? This makes no sense. And careful study, studying what? Studying the Bible? If you study the Bible, you will come to the conclusion that Christians have for 2,000 years. Homosexuality is a sin. It's a grave sin. It's an abomination, in fact, in the Old Testament. And that it should be condemned. It should be opposed. It should be taught against. And after careful study, this woman has come to uh, the conclusion, quote, our view of the world is still, uh, word is still very high as it is for the hundreds of thousands of faithful believers who believe likewise. She wrote, suggesting that one can be an evangelical, holding scripture as the authority on all matters and affirm same-sex relationship. So she's trying to say that she's done a careful study of the Bible and come to her heretical apostate decisions. No, sir. You, no, ma'am. You, you can't do that. You cannot come to a careful study of the Bible and include that it allows for so-called gay marriage. It's just impossible. You can't do it. Every single instance where this issue is dealt with in Scripture, it is negatively prohibited. So you can't make that argument. She doesn't make the argument. She just says, well, my study of Scripture has concluded that it can be affirmed. No, you're wrong. You don't, you don't give the arguments. You can't walk through the text. You can't justify from actual text. You have to basically just state, well, the Bible is okay with it. No, it's not okay with it. Hatmaker, Hatmaker is the most prominent female evangelical leader to date to express support for same-sex relationships. The backlash she faces illuminates how tricky it can be for such leaders to take a stand on thorny cultural and political issues without losing followers. Yes, uh, especially when you're heretical, uh, especially when you are uh, contradicting God's word. That's the problem. And so what happens is that we have a situation where a prominent Christian uh, evangelical leader has decided to basically um, contradict the Bible. She is claiming that it's uh, okay and she is also rejecting not only the scriptural uh, teachings but she's rejecting the entire Christian tradition for 2,000 years. Now as Reform, Reform Protestants we don't hold tradition as sacred, we don't hold it as high as scripture, but if you are contradicting something that Christians have taught for 2,000 years, you better take a second look. You better, better, better not simply do that casually. And you better understand that you are going against the entire weight of Christian history and tradition and Christian teachings for 2,000 years. That should weigh heavy on your heart. It doesn't seem to be in this instance. But we're going to talk more about that in the next segment of Christian Answers. Don't go away. Well, welcome back to our second segment of Christian Answers, and we're continuing on with the conversation about Jen Hatmaker and her departure from Christian morality and her entering into the ranks of a false teacher and an apostate. And the article goes on, Christian female celebrities are usually known for their personal stories not their theological belief statements, notes Kate Bowler, a pr professor of Christian history at Duke Divinity School, who is writing a new book about evangelical women and authority. It is both unusual and remarkable that Hatmaker took this stand in a culture that doesn't typically reward it in women. So we have a uh, professor at Duke Divinity School commenting on the situation and saying that women usually in Christian leadership are known more for their personal stories. 
their more relationship oriented leadership. And it is tragic that we see at a time when we see more and more Christian women coming to the forefront and taking leadership positions in church, denominations, uh, authoring Christian books, uh, on speaking engagements, conferences, workshops, television, radio. We see more and more Christian women coming and teaching the Bible. Unfortunately, what we see is exactly what this professor is talking about. Most of the time, it's more personal stories, but now we're seeing that there, um, the, the Christian women uh, many times are actually uh, willing to step outside of Christian theological orthodoxy if those theological beliefs and moral standards that they are supposedly a part of conflict with personal relationships in their lives. And that's what's happened in the case of Jen Hatmaker. It seems to be that she is uh, relying more on the touchy-feely approach to morality rather than let's find out what the Bible says, let's find out what God says about this and go with that. So she is doing what unfortunately is a stereotypical thing to do for her and that would be to go with your feelings. And she doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And so she is caving in on a key Christian moral point that she really needs to stand on and be a strong beacon for women who aren't as gifted as her as a speaker or aren't uh, privileged to be in a position of leadership as she is. She needs to stand firm, stand strong on the truth of God's word and be a role model for women instead of leading them astray and leading them into heresy and apostasy. Well, it says uh, further, Many evangelicals believe that women are unfit for spiritual leadership, Bowler notes, so many evangelical women today wield influence via storytelling and personal uh, rather than positions of institutional leadership. Well, unfortunately, um, the understanding that women should not be in positions of leadership in the church is not something that is based on them being unfit for leadership, it's based on scripture that says, uh, Paul in the epistles explains very clearly that um, because of the created order and gifts and calling, men are to be those who teach and have authority in the church, ultimate authority in the church, and women are not to have uh, the ultimate teaching and uh, uh, authority position in the church. That's the scriptural order. It's not because that women are unfit for spiritual leadership. It's because the scriptures, again, it comes back down to the scripture. It comes back down, what does the Bible say? And if you want to ignore what the Bible says about this, then you can do whatever you want, but don't call yourself evangelical. Now, Jen Hatmaker is ignoring what the Bible says about marriage, uh, which is odd because you would think that as a woman, she would want to uphold what God says about marriage. Because once you start tampering with marriage, it could be polygamy. It could be anything, any combination of people together it constitutes a marriage. Why? Why would you stop with just gay marriage? Why wouldn't you go on with polygamy, um, uh, generational, transgenerational love, so-called? All kinds of odd, aberrant uh, marriage, uh, so-called arrangements. So she's opening up a can of worms. She doesn't understand it because she's not theologically sophisticated. She does, she's not grounded in scripture. And she's going on the basis of her own feelings and personal opinion. And now she's unfortunately gonna lead a lot of women astray and some men. And uh, the argument uh, goes on, the, the article continues. Most white evangelical women leaders do not engage politics, notes Sharon Hode Miller whose PhD research at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Deerfield, Illinois, my old alma mater, focused on women in evangelical ministry. The collective implication is that you cannot be popular and political, you have to choose. Miller notes that Hatmaker has been a trailblazer in this regard. She has spoken out on racial reconciliation and the global refugee crisis in recent years. Okay, fine, great. Those are areas that 
definitely need to be talked about from a scriptural viewpoint. This spring, she published a controversial Facebook post that expressed support and inclusion for LGBT people. Many of her followers applauded her stance while others expressed concern that she was defying scriptural teaching. Yes, she was defying scriptural teaching, but it isn't a surprise that many of her followers applauded her stance. Why? Because it feels better to affirm all kinds of marriages. Because who wants to have people whose feelings are hurt? Who wants to have, who have people that you know be hurt by your stand? And so this is another touchy-feely approach to theology that qualifies her as an apostate and a heretic. Because when you do theology, when you go to the Bible, you have to look at what God has said, not what you feel about what God has said. You have to submit yourself to the authority of God, not the authority of your feelings. And evidently, this woman and other women, unfortunately, are willing to jettison what God says, what God's will is. They're willing to make the authority their own personal feelings. And they want to be popular, they want to be liked, and they want to like everyone else too. And so the way they do that is they set aside God's clear teaching. That's a no-no. We need to call that out, and that's what I hope I can do today on this show. Say, look, this is wrong. This is a heretical thing that is happening, and we need to say what it is. And unfortunately, it's going to hurt some feelings, but we need to stand on the truth before we consider what it does to our feelings. The article goes on. Kate Shellnut, an editor of Christianity Today magazine, said Hatmaker's most recent comments on the same-sex marriage are consistent with her overall all-are-welcome approach. Jen is very sensitive to the outsider. She is so passionate about including others, cultural outsiders, the homeless, racial minorities, people who have been hurt by the church, Schutz said, she said, Hatmaker's comments last week served to clarify her position and up, update what she'd previously said. So again, you have the stereotypical approach, the touchy-feely approach. She's sensitive. She has an all or welcome approach. Now that is fine in all kinds of areas of life. But if you have to contradict the Bible to be all welcoming, if you have to contradict God's clear teaching from his scripture to feel good and to feel like you're consistent with your message, then you have to change. You have to repent. You have to be informed, conform with God's will, not your own will. And unfortunately, this woman has let her feelings trump God's will. Uh, Shell not believes Hatmaker's uh, most recent commentaries might be used to confirm that women can't be trusted to lead on spiritual matters. For the haters, it's an old I told you so moment, and worse, ammunition to decry women's events and women teachers more generally, said Christianity Today editor uh, Shell Nut. Well, yeah exactly what I'm saying. Uh, she's willing to compromise basic moral Christianity to make people feel good. Yeah, it's a, it's a stereotype, but it's holding true right here. So maybe this is an indication of exactly what the scripture is teaching, that uh, women are to not lead in the church um, overall, I'm not talking about groups, I'm not talking about women's groups, I'm not talking about children's ministry, I'm not talking about specific individual groups, I'm talking about what the scripture teaches. Paul clearly says women are to not to be put in positions of ruling authority and teaching in the church. And here we have a woman who is teaching She's not teaching in the church. She's teaching at women's conferences, but she is teaching false doctrine and teaching heresy. 
and it's probably uh, a lot to do with her uh, feelings toward making people feel welcome, making people feel comfortable. She doesn't want to leave anybody out, and that's commendable, but you can't compromise the Word of God to make people happy. The timing of Hatmaker's comments are notable. She and other popular speakers are in the midst of Belong, a 12-city tour offering encouragement and community to Christian women. Belong is for this generation what Women of Faith was 20 years ago. Both events are created by the same company, and Belong counts as its partners two prominent evangelical ministries, World Vision and Mops. Two of Hatmaker's stage mates, writer Shauna Nyquist and musician Nicole Nordman, have since expressed support for Hatmaker after last week's comments. But many other individual women have taken to social media to say they won't attend, belong, or read Hatmaker's books. Why is Shauna Nyquist and musician Nicole Nordman supporting Hatmaker? Why? Why? Because she's their friend, and she, they like her, and they feel good about her. Well, wait a minute. Time out. What about heresy? What about apostasy? What about false teaching? Um, what about being truthful? Uh, does, that, does, does relationships trump truth? It shouldn't be. Not in the Christian faith. And so... Uh, but other women are saying, no, we're, we're not going there anymore because this is wrong. Jenny Allen, founder of another popular Christian women's conference, the IF Gathering, responded to Hatmaker's comments last week after her phone and inboxes started to blow up. She affirmed that IF Gathering, which has featured Hatmaker as a speaker since its launch in 2014, holds to the traditional teaching on same-sex relationships. Good. Finally, a woman who actually will go out on the record and say this is truth. She said that Hatmaker would not be speaking at next year's I, uh, IF conference as Hatmaker took herself out of IF many months ago for reasons that are her own. Oh, okay. So she already had decided she wasn't going to speak anyway. So, okay. But Alan also said that she had trouble issuing a statement on Hatmaker as she didn't want to drive a relational wedge between me and someone I love so dearly and hurt members of the LGBTQ community, many who are friends. Oh, so this conference speaker, Jenny Allen, wimps out and says, oh, I don't want to hurt her feelings. I'm not going to say anything wrong. She urged readers to practice Christian unity in a divisive moment for many evangelicals. She said the issue of homosexuality is difficult, not because the Bible isn't clear, but because it's an issue. It's not an issue. It's people, and we love people. Oh, boy. So, again, we have this, we have this wimpy response by women who should be strong. They should know better because they're Christians but they're wimping out and we need to be aware of that and we, say, we need to say no, no, no. You need to fight for truth and not be so wishy-washy on these issues. Gay marriage, so-called gay marriage, is wrong because God says it's wrong. Homosexuality is wrong because God says it's wrong and we need to state it clearly and not beat around the bush. Well, we'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless. Mm -hmm.